buddy. Thanks, Jimmy. You're welcome. Catch you later, Jimmy. Okay, get ready. Wait, we don't want to touch this end. Rattlesnakes have big, rough scales. Oh, and check out this pattern. See the diamonds? That's why this species is called a diamondback rattlesnake. Okay, now! Activate creature, creature power suit! Rattlesnake powers! Hey, let's get underground and find that tellurium. Wow, we can really get around down here with rattlesnake powers. <gasps> he sprung an ambush on the squirrel and has him cornered. The rattlesnake has a squirrel in his sights. Rattlesnake vision on. With you, bro. It seems like the squirrel's growing. That's his tail. The ground squirrel's pumping blood to his tail, making it hotter and hotter and making the squirrel seem bigger and bigger. Whoa! Whoa. He fooled him! The rattlesnake struck at the big twitching tail and completely missed the squirrel. That was a rarely seen creature moment! What kind of cool animals live in the black forest? I don't know, but speaking of cool, I'm getting cold. Time to light a fire and set up camp. Okay, I'll set up camp. And why don't you collect wood for the fire? Sure. <laughs> So what are you waiting for? Weren't you gonna get some wood? <laughs> there! Great, so let's get this fire started. Ah, that's better. Whoa, and so it's the Black Forest. Yeah, look at all those shadows. It's like there are strange creatures dancing in the trees. Yeah, this place is really cool. Yeah, this is uh, fun. the fire? Yeah, go look. No, you go look. No, you look first. Uh, let's look together. Okay, one, two, three, look! Huh? A salamander? From out of the fire? Must be a fire salamander. I read about them in an ancient text that I think I have in my backpack. Here. What? You carry around ancient texts? Yeah, doesn't everybody? Oh, where is it? Aha! The fire salamander, born in the fire. The salamander is created from burning wood, and its skin is unharmed by the hottest flame. Oh, he looks all right to me. He's not burned, but he came out of the fire. Yeah. Well, that makes naming this guy easy. I'll call you Flame. Oh, and this guy, ha! Your name is Sparker. This is incredible. Okay, the scientific name for this species is Salamandra salamandra, AKA the fire salamander. 
<gasps> Could you imagine a creature power suit that made us immune to fire? Whoa! <laughs> hey, Aviva, I know it sounds too weird to be true, but there is the fire salamander that appears out of burning logs and is immune to fire. Huh? Wow! Electric! Huh? I've got the answer to all our problems right here. Meet Voltage, the electric eel. Hi, Voltage. Aw, you're not exactly cute, but I'll pet you anyway. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why? He's called an electric eel for a reason. He packs 600 volts of electrical shocking power. That's five times as much as most wall sockets. What? Shocking, I know. But check it out. He's like a living battery. His head area is the positive charge, and his tail area is the negative charge. See? Electricity! Even when he's just swimming around using his low voltage energy, he can light up a light bulb. For real! Wow! Cookie's gotta see this! So you're telling me he can give off even more potential energy than a car battery? 50 times more than a car battery. A creature that has the voltage of lots of car batteries. Oh, I could kiss you. <sighs> but I won't. That's enough to start up the Tortuga, right? That's a lot of voltage. But the Tortuga is a huge ship and needs massive battery power to start up. Voltage just can't release enough power fast enough to replace this huge battery. It won't work. Hmm. Uh, sorry. I got it. <laughs> Voltage may not have enough power to start up the Tortuga, but he surely has enough power to run my mobile invention kit, right? He should have enough for that. Great. So, if we get this going, I can design electric eel power suits. Together, Chris and Martin just might be able to generate enough power to start the Tortuga. Good thinking, Aviva. Let's do it. We need Voltage to unleash his full electricity power. His high voltage hunting power. Wow. The Fishmobile. Hopefully, he'll think it's a real fish and zap it. Ready? Ready. Oh, please work. And here goes. Aviva, now! It worked! It's on! Woohoo! I'm back in invention action! Sorry, Voltage. It's not a real fish, but you did it! We owe you one, buddy. Wolf track! <laughs> yep, definitely dog like. Dog claws always show up in the tracks. Four toe pads, one heel pad, 15 centimeters from toe to heel, 10 centimeters wide. Definitely too big to be a fox or coyote. Oh yeah, it's definitely wolf. And more than one, a wolf pack. I'd say about five different wolves. What? What part of the track is telling you that? Three silver ones. Two black ones. What? Where do you see that? And one white one. How in the world can you tell that from these tracks? Well, actually, you kind of have to look at the big <gasps> picture. Whoa! Now that's a wolf pack. Well, who would have thunk it? Maybe the best way to find wolves is just to be out in the wild talking about wolves. Come in, Tortuga. There's a little boy who cried wolf calling Tortuga. Little boy who cried wolf telling you we found wolves. Forget it, Martin. Wolves on the move. Okay, check that. Run with the wolves. Ravens. Ravens are following them too. Hey, it helps to have wings to follow wolves because they have a fast pace called a lope. A wolf can lope all day long, covering 160 kilometers with hardly a rest. Now that's what I call a marathon. 
Hey, what do you call it when they pick up the pace even faster? More tiring? A chase! An all-out run! Woohoo! They're after something! I know they can marathon all day, and then sprint when they need to. Did you hear a horse? It sounds bigger than a horse. Sounds like it has antlers. How can you tell that? From that moose charging towards us. <laughs> oh, so that's what woke us up. Yeah, so much for sleeping in. Aw, Chris and Martin were screaming because they were being chased by the big, bad Moosey Woosey. That's right, Moosey Woosey 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 Woo. Ahoy, mateys! Is that right? Aye, Aye Captain, that's, that's pirate speak. Arg! Let's, um, heave ho over the blimey and there she blows. Huh? You just said, let's push it really hard over the wow and I see a whale. Hmm. Aye, aye? Uh, that means I'll do it. Like, aye, aye, Captain. I'll do it. Okay, but you got to admit, pirate speak is weird. I mean, like, what's the difference between I and aye, aye again? Okay, let's start there. I means yes, and aye, aye means I'll do it. Got it? Let's see. Aye. Blimey, matey. That's right. Put that pirate hat back on. Aye, aye. There. Now you walk the plank. What? We just helped you, and now I have to walk the plank? Aye, aye, matey! Wait, I just said I'll do it, right? Mm-hmm. Ugh, I mean, aye! Now walk the plank, arg! Aye, aye! But, Captain, me gonna be shark bait for sure! Arg! Okay, Chris, you can come up now. Chris? Where'd he go? Sperm whale power! Ah! Ah! Huh? See, I bumped into our buddy Bumper down there. Hey, Bumper! Oh, the sperm whale! Oh, and there's Bumper's mom! There she blows! Hold on! <gasps> Bumper, you better catch up to your mom. See you later, buddy. Thanks for the whale power. Okay, pirates. We gotta batten down the hatches. There's a big storm on the way. Look! Yikes! So come aboard now! Whoa! Aye, Koki. She means aye, aye, Koki. We'll do that. Oh, yeah. Aye, aye, Koki. Let's go. Tortuga has a double layer shell system with a shock absorbing air vent core in between. Shells hold. Oh! 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 This storm is awesome! It's bioluminescence. Some sea creatures can make two different chemicals inside a special body part called a photophore. And when they mix them together, they make a glowing light. It's kind of like a glow stick. Two chemicals inside, and when mixed, it glows. Why do so many sea fish have it? Jimmy, quick! Shine the light there! Go closer. Okay, so I know those zooplankton glow to find each other and stick together in the deep sea. That's one reason for bioluminescence, communication. And the deep sea shrimp knows they do that, so they're attracted to lights hoping to get a meal. But bigger predators know that little predators, like the shrimp, do this. 
So, another use of bioluminescence, hunting. That anglerfish has a built-in fishing pole. Wow, he really fooled that shrimp. And there's a third use of bioluminescence, defense. Wow, there are so many uses for bioluminescence. It's only one of the most important chemical reactions in the sea. And you know what that means. I do? It means I've got to figure out bioluminescence for my next creature power suit. I guess it's up to you and me to find the Lost Crab Brothers. Do I have to do everything around here? Wow. Ha, a dragonfish. We hit the jackpot, bro. These guys are the masters of bioluminescence. They use it for everything. Tell me about it. Those photophores on the side are for communication with other dragonfish. He can turn them on at will when he has something to say. And the light on the tip of the barbell is sometimes used to confuse predators. But mostly, it's used as a fishing pole. And wait, what's that under his eyes? Oh, gotta scan this. Whoa! It's a special red light, a spy light, that other fish down here can't see. Humans can't see it either. <gasps> so dragonfish have invisibility power. They're like spies. They can see with that light, but other fish, like predators and prey, can't see them. Wow. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, bro? I think I'm thinking what you're thinking. I think we're thinking the same thing. Aviva, come in! Dragon chasers here. Dragon chasers? We need a dragonfish suit. They have the coolest bioluminescence. Dragonfish? Okay, I'm already working on bioluminescence, so no problem. Woo. All right, big guy. Where are you headed now? Hmm. What is that mound? Something's under there. <gasps> of course! Panthers hide food they can't finish and save it for later. It's called a cache, and it can last under the cool earth for days until they're hungry again. If only I could get just a piece of that for those cubs. Hmm. Aha! Uh -huh. Well, I do have panther power. One of the greatest, stealthiest creatures on earth. Now's my chance. Okay, okay, easy, guys. I told you, you can't snack on the babysitter. Did someone say snack? Martin, you made it. Oh, yeah, and I brought panther snacks. Ta-da! Yeah, I brought food for the hungry cubs. I am the panther provider, the greatest hunter in the swamp. Ah! You again? No! Hang on! That's for SWAT! He ate it! And he's still hungry! Crunch! SWAT! Oh, no! Oh, Mama Panther! She's back! I can't believe it. A rarely seen battle between a Florida panther and an alligator. Gators will sometimes eat young panthers. And panthers will sometimes eat young gators. But standoffs like these usually end in a draw. Yes! She did it! She saved her cubs! Mama Panther to the rescue! And look! She even came with dinner! Looks like our cub sitting job is over! And here's our pickup! Found ya! Bye, Swan! Bye, Crunch! Mission accomplished! We found the rare Florida Panther! awesome predator of the swamp. And we even helped them out a little bit. Yeah! 
Mom's leg is looking a lot stronger. <laughs> Look, Crunch and Swat are so happy to have her back. <gasps> Why am I craving a big raw steak that's been left out overnight? Uh, yeah, because you're half Krat and half Tea Devil. No, I'm not. Look at me. I'm in control. <laughs> oh, no. Here we go again. Oh, yeah, T-Bone. I smell that, too. <laughs> Rotten carcass somewhere around here. <laughs> Gotta find it. <laughs> we can smell well from up here. <laughs> My nose seems super sensitive, too. I feel like I could sniff out a rotting carcass from a kilometer away. <laughs> Smells like it's coming from over there! <laughs> Only young tea devils can climb trees. Not big Chris devils in totally out of control creature power suits. Relax, Martin. I'm fine. Hmm. I'm thinking the little tea devils climb so they can get higher up to get a better sniff on the carcasses. Over there, let's go! Location. What's up, Koki? Aren't you supposed to be keeping track of the tag tea devils? I can't get any work done because rotten meat and carcasses gross me out. I hear you, but as part of the Wild Kratz crew, we're gonna meet all types of animals. Live ones and ones that have died of natural causes. Yeah, but animals that eat rotten stuff, yuck! Hey, somebody's gotta eat maggoty meat. At least it's the tea devils and not us. <laughs> Nothing left but bones, and the tea devils are still munching. Look at all that good stuff inside. Bone marrow. That's nutritious food, if you can get to it. Yeah, not every animal has the tooth and jaw strength to bust open the bone and get to the marrow. But tea devils do. Hey, stop breathing on my neck. Ah! Your teeth are huge. They're growing. <laughs> tea devil teeth never stop growing. Why? That's why. Chewing on hard bones wears them down. They need teeth that keep growing so they can crunch bones. Hmm. The great thing about being a scavenger is you can eat things that other creatures can't. Nothing goes to waste when a tea devil's around. Want a bone, T-Bone? Hey. He was just with me a minute ago. Hmm. I'm not getting any signal on the tea devils You've lost your tea devil mind, and now T-Bone is lost, too. Koala Balloon, where are you? Where could that marsupial be hiding? There he is, Martin! Grab him! Gotcha! <laughs> Chris, go long! What? I have an idea! Coming at you, Chris! Got him! Hang on to Koala Balloon for as long as you can. Oh, easy for you to say. Hurry, Martin. Martin, is this really the best time for an art project? It is when it's a koala decoy. If it looks like a koala and smells like a koala, then it is a koala. Okay, Chris, toss him over. It's about time. Yeah. The old switcheroo. Oops! Oh no! I've dropped my tender, juicy baby koala! All right, they fell for it! There's always time for a little art. Ah. Whew, that was close. The good news is, we covered a lot of ground with that dingo chase. The bad news is, we went five kilometers in the wrong direction. Oh, it would have been nice to travel at night when the desert's cool, but it looks like we're gonna be spending the night in this tree. Yep, can't take a chance having the koala anywhere near the ground. Nope. Yep, good night, Martin. <sighs> good night, Chris. Good, good night, night, koala, koala balloon. balloon. What? <laughs> oh, Martin, koalas are active at night. 
So he's gonna stay up all night and we've gotta keep an eye on him. Oh, morning, Chris. Morning, Martin. These are awesome. Yeah, with the iris open all the way and the light sensing cones on high. The moonlight lights up everything. All right, so where are you, googly eye? Uh, Martin, do you feel like we're being watched? Yeah, like from back there. Oh. Hmm, nothing. Hmm, let's keep going. Hmm, what? What do you mean, what? Huh? Huh, what? Huh, hey. who? Hey, who? Who, where? Where, what? What? Googly eye. eye! Check it out. We have googly eyes, too. Hello, little alien creature. We come as friends. Googly eyes, one and all. <gasps> <laughs> Follow that tarsier. I wonder where he's taking us. I don't know, but he sure seems to. This? This tree? What is so special about this tree? Hey, Martin, you know, we're pretty deep in the forest now. Martin. Huh? Yeah, who knows where this tree is on the map? We better mark our route on the GPS. Pass me my creature pod. What do you mean? You have the creature pods, don't you? No, you were supposed to grab them off the charger. I was. No, you were. I'm pretty sure it was you. Um, nope. Huh. So, what you're telling me is that we're deep in the Indonesian rainforest, in the middle of the night, without our creature pods, following a tiny elusive primate, with nothing but these experimental night vision goggles that could fail at any minute? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Awesome! <gasps> the lightning bugs are coming out. Fireflies! It's happening! Come on, follow them! Hey, Aviva! If you thought syncing up our video screens with the creature pods was cool, Check this out. The fireflies will synchronize their blinking when they're in a large group. Whoa, that's amazing. Whoa, it's starting. The fireflies are coming. Shut off the lights. You've got to see this. Whoa. This is the only time to see fireflies. They only come out like this for two weeks of the year. And each lightning bug only flies and flashes for this one time in their whole lives. When they flash, they're talking to each other. The male fireflies fly around and flash to get the attention of the females. The females are on the ground watching the flying flashes. If she likes what she sees, she'll flash back. So the fireflies are flashing so they can pair up and lay eggs that turn into glowworms, that turn into fireflies. But what are they saying to each other? It's like a code, a code that we don't know. We've got to figure out the lightning bug code. Bioluminescence. Light created by a living thing. Most light creates heat, but the firefly's glowing belly isn't hot. It creates cold light. How does it work? How do you do it? Blinker. His name's Blinker. How do you know it's Blinker? Oh, I'd recognize him anywhere. Okay, so at the Bug Olympics, how does a firefly start? What are you doing? I'm telling Blinker a joke and Firefly. At the Bug Olympics, how does a firefly start the race? How? On your mark, get set, glow! <laughs> <laughs> look at the fireflies I caught. All right. Have a good look at them, then let the fireflies go. Okay, it's time to let the fireflies go. Bye-bye, fireflies. Be free. That's the Wild Kratz way. Hey, look! The fireflies are syncing up their blink patterns. They are so pretty. Look at them fly. Okay, why do fireflies love thunderstorms? 
because they're lightning bugs. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.